Hello and welcome to Stand in the Gap. I'm Sam Rohr and I'm going to be joined again today by Pastor Isaac Crockett. Now if you've joined us before for Stand in the Gap or you're just joining us for the very first time, on this program we select cultural issues of great significance in our nation and then examine them from the perspective of a biblical worldview. Some of the issues are controversial and perplexing and seemingly without answer. Others uh, are like the focus today, are not so much controversial as perhaps just more misunderstood. But in either case, we choose issues of great importance to our people, to our nation as a whole, or we choose issues of extraordinary importance to God and His conditional requirements to either bless or, dis or discipline our nation. And we do this because we know that the Word of God provides the answers and the clarity for every issue regardless of what it is. We're committed to providing a focused analysis and a practical solution for all of these things. Now today, our theme is Thanksgiving, the secret to God's national blessing. So whether you're watching this program in the official Thanksgiving month of November or perhaps some other time, hopefully this program today will be encouraging informative, and will help to deepen the understanding of the principle of thanksgiving and take it from just turkeys and shopping alone to God and the need to be grateful to Him for national blessing. Our special guest is David Barton, historian, author, public speaker, and founder and president of Wall Builders Incorporated, and I'm going to introduce him in just a moment. But Isaac, before we get going into this here this morning, I want to um, I'm going to, just a moment, I'm going to quote from a portion of a proclamation about Thanksgiving that President Lincoln gave. And I think a lot of folks may recognize this, but I would like you to just listen to a piece of what I read and focus on what it is that Abraham Lincoln is focusing on mm -hmm. in his proclamation as a way of kind of helping set this up. Now, this is what I'm going to read from. This was done October 3rd, 1863. It was in the middle of the of the uh, bloody Civil War. This is what the, a portion of what he read. He said this, The year that is drawing towards its close has been filled with the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they came. He said, No human counsel hath devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God, who, while dealing with us in anger for our sins, hath nevertheless remembered mercy. He went on to say, It has seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole of the American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and all those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. Wow, quite a little proclamation, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so eloquent. It, wow. it is eloquent. No speechwriter probably either. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, uh, he spoke from the heart, but that goes right to the heart. So what were the things that he presented in this national proclamation about Thanksgiving that undergirds Thanksgiving as we should be thinking about it? Yeah, well, he made this focus so much on our relationship with God. And, you know, he talks about praising God and mm. repenting of sin. And, and you look at the Psalms, whether it's David or other writers, and there's that praise to God, repentance of sin. You look at the New Testament, whether it's John the Baptist or Jesus or the 12 disciples, and it's a praise to God and repentance of sin. And so it's, um, it sounds almost like a sermon, and that's what Thanksgiving should be. He, he understood that our nation needs to own up to our responsibilities and our, our connection to God and our prosperity to God is dependent upon it. So God... Thanksgiving, gratefulness to the giver of blessings, oh, yeah. even in the midst of difficult troubles, oh, very civil difficult. war. Hardest time ever, yeah. Um, all those things, ladies and gentlemen, that really Thanksgiving is all about. And in the rest of the program, in just a minute, I'm going to bring in David Barton. We're going to begin talking. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of Thanksgiving, where it started, what the pilgrims thought about it. And a lot of these pieces will fit together and hopefully 
will help us to understand more importantly, not just the importance of thanksgiving, but the linkage between thanksgiving and God's national blessings, which we so desperately need. So stay with us. We'll be right back in just a moment. Truth, flexible or permanent? The Bible, ancient history or powerfully relevant? Culture, a reflection of enlightenment or warning signs? The pastor, commentator or frontline combatant? Every day, American Pastors Network speaks to these questions where and when they matter with hundreds of affiliate radio stations nationwide. A website and mobile app screening today's headlines through the twin lenses of the Bible and the Constitution. Educating, informing, equipping. This is the American Pastors Network. The time is now to stand in the gap for truth. Well, welcome back to Stand in the Gap, and today we're focusing on Thanksgiving, uh, really the secret to God's national blessing. And I want to bring in right now our very special guest, a good friend, personal friend, uh, but also a friend of everyone who loves America and loves our founding and understands who God is. And that's David Barton, uh, president and founder of Wall Builders. David, thanks for taking time to be with us on, on the program today. We really appreciate it. Hey, Sam, Isaac, good to be with you guys. Thanks for having me. Well, I tell you, if we're looking, we're looking into your room right now down there where you are and all of those things behind us. I've actually been in that room, David, but they're all, well, tell us, it's ex what are we looking at? Well, behind us, we have a lot of the World War II section right over my shoulder here. We have a lot of the education section. Uh, we have the museum library. We have about 120,000 items from before 1812. So when it comes to, for example, the pilgrims and Thanksgiving, and when it comes to Abraham Lincoln, things, as a matter of fact, uh, you were talking about the Abraham Lincoln Proclamation. Let me just even throw this one up. You see Abraham Lincoln right there on top, Proclamation. But you notice it's a day of humiliation, fasting, and prayer. And it's interesting that nearly every single Thanksgiving we've had in America was preceded by a day of fasting and prayer. And that's why we were giving thanks, it was because God answered the, the thanks we were fasting and praying for. And, and so even with the pilgrims, we celebrate Thanksgiving based on what they did. But we often forget that that painting of the pilgrims coming to America that hangs in the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol, the famous painting uh, there on the Speedwell, getting ready to get on the Mayflower to come. That was a day of prayer and fasting for them. They were seeking God's help, and they got here. They got God's help, so they have a day of thanksgiving. Uh, Continental Congress, we have days of thanksgiving with, with the victory at Saratoga, with the discovery of treason by Benedict Arnold, with, with the victory at Yorktown. But they were all preceded by days of fasting and thanksgiving. And so that is the sequence. But it, as you point out, that Thanksgiving is a big time in America. Um, this happens to be a handwritten Thanksgiving proclamation from one of the signers of the Constitution, John Langdon. Uh, here's a proclamation from John Adams. This is uh, one that John Adams issued when he was president. Uh, here's a Thanksgiving proclamation by Oliver Wolcott. He's a signer of the Declaration of Independence. Here's one from Samuel Huntington. Uh, he's a signer of the Declaration of Independence, Thanksgiving proclamation. I mean, I, you just keep going. We have, we have literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds uh, as a matter of fact, by the time you get to 1815, there had been 1,400 government-issued calls to prayer in America. So right, well, we, we, we have a big, big focus on Thanksgiving. Well, I tell you, this is really important. Let's go back now to the pilgrims, if we could, David. You've already highlighted a little bit, but just in a brief sense, what drove the pilgrims to the fact of establishing that day of gratefulness Thanksgiving, from which we get the precedent. What was it? What was the purpose? What was the driving motivation of their heart uh, when they did you, that? To understand Thanksgiving, you have to understand the pilgrims. They are the first really Bible-centered people in the English language in a thousand years. We've come through, uh, they were the products of the Reformation. Reformation was everybody needs to get back into the Bible. And at that point in time, we'd gone a thousand years, the Bible had been put up, you couldn't read it in your own common language, Literacy, illiteracy was really high. These are the guys that come back in and say, we got to get back to the Bible. So they become students of the Geneva Bible. If you see the, the picture of them hanging in the rotunda of the Capitol, they're all gathered around an open Bible. On the Bible is written the title. It's a Geneva Bible. Geneva Bible contained commentaries 
by the reformers that said, we've been doing it wrong for a thousand years. Here's how you should do government. Here's how you should do church and state. Here's how you should do education. Here's how you should do judiciary. Here's what you do with private property, et cetera. So the Bible was their guidebook. Uh, they went through a lot of persecution. That's why they came to America. Their pastor, John Greenwood, pastor of the pilgrims, got himself killed because he said Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Now, we don't consider that revolutionary, but when Queen Elizabeth heard that, she said, no, I'm the head of the church, and so she killed him because he said Christ was the head of the church. So that's when the pilgrims left England and went to Holland because they were being so heavily persecuted in England. And Holland, they liked Holland. There was religious liberty there. It was the land of the Reformation, but it was a very secular culture. And they were Englishmen, and they liked their English traditions. They said, let's go to the New World where we can be Englishmen. We can practice English traditions. We can have the Bible. We don't have the secular culture. So that's what brought them to America. And so they're very grateful to God, even though it was very hard. That first thing, that first winter, half of them died. Mm. Uh, it, it was just unbelievable what happened to them. And they still have a day of Thanksgiving because they're in a land of freedom where they can worship God, where they can live according to the dictates of the Bible. Uh, their relationships with the Indians were terrific. They have the longest lasting peace treaty in American history between Anglos and Native Americans. That was driven by the Bible because the king gave them a charter, said, it's my land over there. You can have my land when you get there. They got there and they said, no, you're wrong. It's the Indian's land. We'll buy it from the Indians at the price that they set. And so from the very beginning, they did things very differently. They had much to be thankful for, even though they had a lot of tragedy in their midst. They're finally at a place where they can live out their biblical faith with, without any interference from government. And that was big to them. Wow, David, that, that makes so much sense. And you've, you've really given us kind of living history of that. Uh, and, and you've showed us so many examples just right there with those different newspaper articles and proclamations of how our nation has given thanks to God. Could you help just make this link for us then? You know, when Moses is uh, turning things over to the people as they're about to go into the promised land, Deuteronomy chapter 6, he, he says, you know, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God, and he goes into it, and then he tells them not to forget to be thankful. As they're prosperous, the temptation will be to leave the Lord. And, and the same thing happens in our country. So could you kind of link this together about how God's blessings are tied to our thanksgiving towards Him and our praise to Him and, and recognition of where they come from? Yeah, it's, it's a significant factor in American history that we're very, we be, believe very much in accountability to God. And that's why days of prayer and fasting, days of prayer and thanksgiving go together. We're told in Romans 1.20 that if we stop being God-conscious, our behavior will change. And so being God-conscious is not just saying, hey, things are going really well, let's thank God. It's also being aware that, you know, God gives blessings, but he also gives judgments. And it depends on behavior and what we do. And so it's interesting that even when you take a Ben Franklin, uh, who certainly, I don't believe he was a Christian founding father, but he was a God-conscious founding father. Probably 90 to 95 percent of the founding fathers were Christians. Ben Franklin wasn't. And yet, when he wrote the Constitution of Pennsylvania in 1776, Franklin put in there that you cannot hold office in Pennsylvania unless you believe in a future state of rewards and punishments. If you don't believe you're going to answer to God for what happens, we don't want you in government in Pennsylvania. And that was from a non-Christian founding father. So they believe that you are accountable to God. And if you don't do things his way, and, and as Isaac, what you mentioned, is that as, as Moses was telling the people the amount of blessing, the amount of cursing, in latter Deuteronomy, he said, here's the deal, guys. You can choose blessing. Mm -hmm. You can choose cursing. Um, what's going to happen? And God told him, he said, you're going to get in the promised land. You're going to have so much prosperity. You're going to think that you did all this, and you're going to forget me. And so that, yeah, that sense true. of not being God conscious is the pilgrims were very, very, very cognizant of that. And the pilgrims actually started not just the Thanksgiving Day tradition, but they started a tradition of two proclamations a year. In the, in the springtime, they always had a day of prayer and fasting. In the fall, they always had a day of Thanksgiving. So on the one side, it's we got to humble ourselves. we got to get before God. we got to repent of our sins, and then God will bless us, and then he blessed them all year long. And at the end of the year, they said, man, looking back, look how God blessed us. Let's thank him for what he did. So it's not just a one-sided aspect that God's a God of love. He's also a God of judgment and justice and, and mm -hmm. righteousness. And the, the pilgrims had that very balanced view. And so Thanksgiving in America meant something really kind of different then than it does now. Because we'll, we did the day of Thanksgivings, but we don't do the day of prayer and fasting and re right. repentance and humiliation. And, and, and so we don't really remember that God is God. We oftentimes make God in our own image. 
the pilgrims wanted to make themselves in God's image, not make him in their, in their image. Well, David, that makes so much sense, exactly what you're describing. And as we look historically at our own nation, as we look biblically and historically at the nation of Israel, uh, you know, Sam, you travel a lot throughout our country as the president of the American Pastors Network. You are in, interacting with thousands of pastors and you see trends going on in our country. Um, I think we can all kind of know this, but is our country becoming less grateful? Have we become maybe ungrateful uh, as opposed to what our founding fathers were? And, and if so, why, why do you think that is? Well, you know, Isaac, uh, I think it's an appropriate question to ask. And uh, David, who we were just watching here right now, commenting on this, his relating of all of the proclamations yeah. that have happened before, the Pilgrim's understanding, Ben Franklin's understanding, we look at that and say, does that sound like anybody today? Mm. Not very many people today. I think, Isaac, by and large, we as a nation have not, we've walked away from Thanksgiving. We are not grateful to the God of heaven. Mm. And I think that we have fallen into the same trap, and, uh, and David alluded to it, um, much like the nation of Israel did. Uh, our pilgrims, our founders came. They, we uh, devised and set up a form of government that reflected biblical principles, Declaration of Independence, Constitution. Uh, God then blessed because we did those things. We have now blessed beyond any nation in history. Oh, yeah. And I think we have done exactly what God said to Israel not to do. When these things happen, don't forget that I'm the one that gave it to you. Mm -hmm. I think that's really where we are. And I also think, Isaac, as uh, David was saying, and I'm going to go back to David here in just a minute, but it calls to mind a couple of verses in Scripture. Uh, Psalm 116, 17 says, I will offer, King David said, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I think all through the Old Testament, God established thanksgiving and it actually told Israel to establish a time of sacrifice of thanksgiving. Then it comes back in Psalm 107, 21 and 22, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His steadfast love, for His wondrous works to the children of men, and let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of His deeds in song. Hmm. I think thanksgiving, without understanding who God is, we can't really offer real thanksgiving, Isaac. And, and David, I want to go back to you in the last couple of minutes here right now. You've heard what I've said. It does tie in to what you are saying. But uh, do you agree that we as a nation are less grateful today as we were? I mean, I obviously said what I think. I, I think there's no evidence that we are grateful like certainly the pilgrims were and our founders. But when you look at that, you are an historian. You, 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 you have the documents of what people said before and did. Um, are there events? Are there causes? things that have happened in our nation's history, other than the fact that we've been prosperous and forgotten God. Now, maybe that's the sole piece of it. But are there other things, perhaps, that you could draw our attention to that would be indicators of when we forgot God or how we've forgotten God? Anything that you could put in to undergird this? Yeah, there, there are several things I can point to in the, in the current culture of the last 30 years or so. The church has become ominously silent on things like this. It refuses generally to talk about what's in the culture. We know that only 2.8% of pastors today, 384,000 senior pastors, only 2.8% are willing to talk about from the pulpit what also occurs in culture around. So even though we have an annual Thanksgiving holiday every year, hey, that's government. We don't do that. We do our own stuff. We've not made the Bible re very relevant to people. We add to that education that we've become more and more secular in education. We keep taking God out of things. We won't let kids acknowledge God. We can't mention God in the classroom. We can't do that. So it looks more and more like what we have in America we did because we can't talk about God what he did. Uh, one of the big things, we just this last year, we got a professor who said, you know, I was talking about the pilgrims of Thanksgiving, and my kids said, hey, Thanksgiving is a day of mourning. That's a day we should be regretting in America and the, the professor said the kid gave me 11 articles showing in major news sources where that we should be calling for Thanksgiving as a day of mourning because that's the day we slaughtered all the Indians. The pilgrims had a day of Thanksgiving because of all the Indians they had killed. That's pure historical bunk. 
But that's the problem. We don't even know our own history anymore as a people. And when somebody makes an outrageous statement like that, we go, man, I didn't know that. Instead of saying, hey, is that true? Where's the documentation? Because I've got all the documentation on the other side. Do you have something historically different? Mm. <laughs> no, you don't. You just have an agenda. And so the church has been silent. Uh, the fastest growing group of, of faith, faith people in America are people who have no faith. We are growing secularly faster than anything else, and that's a reflection of the church not doing much to be relevant, not doing much to bring God into daily life and living, and then we throw media and secular education on top of that, and we're getting away from this pretty fast. Well, David, you just went right to the heart. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting. You started with a silent church. You ended with a silent church, but in the middle of it, we have a reflection of distorted education and history and all of that. Ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, I'm going to continue our discussion with David as we close up the program and we talk about solution. All right, this is where we are. David's told us a little bit of how we got here. How can we get back to becoming a nation of gratefulness to God? We'll talk about that in just a minute as we come back after this break. Stand in the Gap is produced and recorded in the studios of WBPH Philadelphia, positively different television. To watch archives of this program, go to WBPH.org. Welcome back to the program, Stand in the Gap, and we are so glad to have our friend and a, a national historian, David Barton, with us today as we talk about this issue of Thanksgiving. So many times we think of it as just a holiday to get together with family or to get an early start on shopping uh, for the Christmas deals that come up, but uh, there's a lot of biblical uh, facts that go with this and historical facts as we look at our forefathers, the pilgrims, and how uh, they really took this as a time to show their gratitude to God as well as uh, sacrificial praise to Him. And so as we look now, we've seen how our country has gotten away from where we should be, how we've become ungrateful. We want to look at what we can do to return to the Lord. And so, David, um, we, we again thank you for being with us. And as we see, we've seen how there are misunderstandings for what Thanksgiving really is. You, you even pointed out in the last segment some gross not just misinterpretations of history, but just gross lies, uh, complete fabrications of history, making uh, things out that never happened with, uh, with the pilgrims, for example. How do we go about now? I mean, I know you study the past, but we, we, we keep repeating those things if we don't learn from it. Um, you're also a, a speaker and the president of Wall Builders. What do you, would you say for our viewers today that we can do to regain a thankful heart as a nation? One, there, I think there's three things. One is what we can do individually. Individually, we need to know what Thanksgiving is all about. Uh, it's been out of the textbooks for a number of years. I would recommend people go to wallbuilders.com, and you will see the, the documentation there. You'll see actually what kids are being taught. You'll see those, those 11 articles that the student brought forward, the Thanksgiving's Day of Mourning, and you'll see the right response to that historically and biblically. So individually, learn about Thanksgiving. Celebrate it yourself. Make sure that you're God-conscious. Uh, not just be grateful for football games on Thanksgiving and we get family together. Be grateful for God, His blessings. The second thing is what the church can do. You know, you, you began by, by reading from that 1863 Thanksgiving proclamation by Lincoln. I have that 1863 proclamation here, but notice it says church advocate. This is a church publication, and it's the one that printed the president's Thanksgiving proclamation. The church thought it was relevant to be engaged in what was coming forth from government and give a biblical perspective on it. The church ought to be engaged in this and, and get definitely into this. And, and then the third thing is remember why we do this. And by the way, the pilgrim, pilgrims did not have the first Thanksgiving in America. Back in 1541, we had one in Palo Duro Canyon in Texas. Uh, and 1516, we had one in Florida, 1619 in Virginia. But the pilgrims said, hey, we're going to do three days of Thanksgiving. We're going to invite our Indian friends to celebrate with us. So 51 pilgrims with 90 Indians. 
And they said, we're going to do a lot of food and feasting. We're going to do a lot of joint stuff together. We're having athletic competitions, and we're remembering God. And that's what we can do for Thanksgiving. David, we're going to have to break away. We're right at the end of the program. Thank you so much for being with us today on Stand in the Gap. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the program here, Stand in the Gap, focusing on Thanksgiving. I hope that you understand a bit more clearly what Thanksgiving is about. Be aware of who God is. Be grateful to what He has done and those of you in the church, those of you who know the Lord, pastors who are watching, get engaged and bring people's attention back to the God of heaven. And if you've been watching our program, never contacted us, can I ask you, send us a letter, contact us, let us know what Stand in the Gap is doing for you.